Hello everyone. Today we are going to make a skeleton character. As we can see in the level, when the character dies, a skeleton will be spawned, it samples the character's current actions, and can also be affected by various forces in Niagara, to simulate effects such as death. Of course, we can replace these bones with any mesh, such as some mechanical structures or others. Okay, now let's take a look at how to make this effect. First, we have an example character with a running animation. Then there is a complete character skeleton in the assets. They are components, which makes it easier for us to simulate each part. That's all we need. You can download these assets for free on my Patreon. Now let's create Niagara. First, we need to attach the bones to the character. Use Mesh Renderer. Then add Skeletal Mesh Location in Particle Update. To let the particles sample the location of the character's skeleton. Select the Preview Mesh. Set Spawn Burst to 10. OK. We can see the skeleton in preview. Then set the filtered sockets in the skeletal mesh location. We need to make the location of the particle spawn in the socket we selected. Because, we can see that each bone corresponds to the socket in the character skeleton. So that these bone components can be combined into a complete skeleton. We have added some slots here in advance which basically fit most humanoid characters. You can also add or reduce sockets by yourself. Okay, we add these sockets. Then go to sampling type and select sockets. We can directly select the socket index and manually set which sockets the particles should sample, since we've added 17 sockets. Spawn count is 17. In the socket index, use return exec index to have each particle sample a corresponding socket. Now we can see that the particles form the skeleton. Next, let's add bones to complete the skeleton. These bones also need to be in order. Oh, might be a little too large, should be smaller like 0.2. Okay, there are 17 sockets in total, so we need to add 17 corresponding bones. One thing we need to make sure here is that the names of the bones and the sockets match. For example, if the first socket name is upper arm, so our first bone also uses static mesh upper arm, and the second is low, so the bone also uses arm low. OK, now we have added the corresponding bone for each sockets, but we will find that the mesh displayed in the preview is the bone of index 0. At this time, we need to search for mesh index in the particle attributes. This parameter can select which mesh index to display. For example, now the index is 0, is arm up. We can change it to any index. Yes, just as we can see, so we can use return exec index as in skeletal mesh location to let each particle display the bone of its corresponding index. That's it. But now we will also find that there may be some issues with the rotation and scaling of these bones. This may be the default rotation of the socket. Let's fix it. If we want to make adjustments uniformly, we can add initial mesh orientation. Negative 0.25 should be fine. Yes. We can see that most of the bones have been corrected, but there are still some bones, so let's adjust each mesh separately. In the mesh renderer here we can adjust the scale, rotation, and offset of the mesh. Let's do it.
Okay, so now we have a skeleton composed of bone components. Let's put it in the level. Yes, attach it to the character. It will be consistent with the character's movements. Let's modify the character material for better effect. In character's material we set its opacity mask to zero so that the skeleton can be clearly seen. Yes, it looks great, a very good effect. We can also use it as an effect when the character dies, such as when the character is burned by flames, the surface gradually dissolves, leaving only a simple effect like a skeleton. Let's create a simple dissolve using value step. Any noise texture. A float parameter, connect them together. That's it. If we want some emissive color around the edges of the material, it will look more like burning. So add another value step. They use the same float to control the edge of dissolution. Then add another float is the width of the emissive color edge. Since the newly added value step is larger than the original, its displayed area is larger than the original. We subtract the small value step from the big value step to get the edge, then multiply it by a color to get the emissive color edge. Here we should use a value step with larger display area for opacity mask. Okay, that's it. Now we can see the bones inside the dissolved material, which is a great effect. Next, we can also use material parameter collection sets to more easily control the dissolve. Create a material parameter collection and add a scalar parameter to it to control the parameters in the material. Set the default value to 1. Okay, now let's create a material animation in the level blueprint. First, add a timeline to control the dissolving of the material. We want to keep the dissolving duration short, so 3 seconds should be fine. Add a set scalar parameter value and select the material parameter collection we just created. Let's play. The skeleton will appear after dissolving. Next, we can create a skeleton that's affected by forces, like gravity. When the skeleton dies, its bones will fall to the ground. Let's duplicate the Niagara and move the skeletal mesh location to particle spawn. This time, we'll only spawn the particles once, when the skeleton dies. Add velocity from point to give bones a random velocity. and add gravity force. That's exactly what we need. Now let's add collision. We use analytical plane, which is easier to display. Set the analytical collision plane position to one, which means that when the world positions, Z axis is at one, the particles will collide with the plane. Then these settings based on our simulation they're not fixed values. That should be okay. We also need to add the align particles with collision plane. Just like before, use allow alignment on Z so the bones are oriented correctly. Set these parameters and we should have a pretty good effect. Let's see. It works pretty well. Now let's do a full demo. First, get the character in the level, add spawn system attach. And let it last for a while, since our dissolve time is 3 seconds. After 3 seconds, we destroy the Niagara and then spawn a new Niagara. To simulate the skeleton's death. Okay, that should work now. 
It lasts three seconds and then dies. Pretty good. For this demonstration, we're using whole bones. In our project, we can create more split bones and break them up to make the simulation even better. Okay, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.